some of the tools that I mentioned relate to planning and preparation. And this is one of the things that we have to actively take control of. It's kind of like saving. We don't build boundaries by accident and we don't save by accident. We've got to force saving. Like saving money doesn't happen by accident. We've got to force it. And we've got to do it in advance because we don't just save the money that's left. Okay, so planning and preparation. If we, whatever situation you're dealing with, so if we're talking about your time, for example, and you feel that, there is an unreasonable expectation of the workload that you have. In order to prepare for these conversations and in order to prepare for this boundary building, you're going to need to sit down and draw up a realistic timetable of what your life looks like on a weekly basis. So that, you know, if someone came to you and said, well, Yvonne, you say your, uh, you say your workload is unreasonable. Um, what is your workload? In that moment, you're not prepared. And so then it becomes a feeling. Well, I just, I feel like I'm overworked. Yeah, but can we actually sit down? Can you show me some kind of timetable? Can you show me some kind of indication of what your general responsibilities are? So on a weekly, monthly basis, and what the past couple of weeks have looked like, so that if someone was sitting down with that conversation and going, okay, prove it, I don't think you're, I don't think that your workload is unreasonable. You can actually say, okay, let's have this conversation. So what I've done, because I'm also wondering, am I being unreasonable? I was also wondering, like, should I be doing things differently? You know, I, I drew up a, an indication of my, my workload for the last six weeks. I, I drew up an indication of what my general responsibilities are and how long they take. Um, and so that we can look at this. Now, there's a couple of things and there's a couple of reasons that that's important. One, it provides evidence for any kind of conversation that's going to come up and you're going to have to initiate some of these conversations, fine. But it also provides you with the sense that you, you're not the problem. And maybe you are the problem, okay? So this would then identify like, actually, I don't know why I'm complaining. <laughs> I don't, you know. Or it may be, it gives you that sense that I'm not mad because it's very easy in an environment where everybody's overworking and everybody's stressed and there's always crises. It's always, it's easy to feel like I'm the one with the problem. I should just suck it up. I should just be more. So having this formally written down is very valuable for you to go, no, actually I'm not mad and this isn't sustainable. So preparing is sitting down and going, if someone asked me to prove that I'm overworking, could I actually do that? That's very important. So preparation, do that. We don't have to even talk about, don't even think about the conversations you're going to have to begin with. This is your behind the scenes preparation. Okay. Prepare people for what to expect from you. So when you're studying, one of the ways this looks, for example, is with your family. A lot of people struggle with managing their family's expectations of what, you know, what the family expects from you while you're studying. And so then it comes in, no, I can't have supper tonight with the family. No, I can't go to so-and-so's birthday party. And that builds up resentment. We've got to be aware of the fact that resentment generally occurs when expectations don't meet reality. That's when people get angry. We don't really think about that, but it's important, right? So I'm, I get resentful and bitter and I feel betrayed when I expected something from you and I didn't get it. That's when people get angry and frustrated and resentful. If they know this is what I can expect from that person, mentally they are prepared for what they're going to get from you. And they may not like it, but it's a very different sense of knee-jerk resentment in the moment and anger. And it's slowly a case of, well, that person just doesn't do that. And so I don't expect that. And if we train people in advance what to expect from us, the resentment decreases. So at the beginning of the year, when you're studying with your family, sit down with the family in positive times. And that's crucial. Do this when things are calm. Having a conversation with someone where you've already upset them, where they're already resentful, it's very difficult to have logical conversations then. Because I need something from you now and you're not giving it to me. Now is not the time to sit down and go, let's have a calm conversation about this. I'm annoyed, right? Do this before I'm annoyed, okay? So sit down with your family when times are good. When it, you know, I've registered for my exams, I've registered for my studying. Okay, guys, can we just sit down and have a conversation as a family or even individually? Can we just sit down and have a conversation 
um, about like what I'm going to need this year. You know, I know you support me. I know you love me. I know that, you know, you guys are behind me 100% of the time. Um, so I just want to figure out what my life is going to look like. And I want to make sure that I plan to do this properly. So talk about it in terms of yourself right? These conversations are, can be a lot easier if we, if we learn to say things a little differently. So I just want to say, like, can we just talk about um, what I should be doing this year and how I'm going to do it so that I can make sure that I pass? Okay. So but one of the things that's going to be very difficult is the amount of, you know, I know we have like a lot of birthdays and a lot of family, you know, a lot of family obligations and occasions and events during the year. And that's going to be really, really difficult for me because often they clash with exams um, and I'm working as well. I really need the time to study. So, you know, how how will you feel if I say, like, I'm generally not going to be able to attend these events? Can we talk about that? Because I don't want to upset the family and I don't want to let people down, but I really do need that time. Um, and so how can we deal with this? Raising it that way sounds a lot better than, oh, hey, it's your aunt's birthday tomorrow. You know, we're, we're going for lunch and you're going, no, I can't go for lunch. Um, yeah, I've, got, I've got a test on Monday and then everybody's annoyed with you and you're letting everyone down and you don't care about us, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Having that conversation right up front and then continually reinforcing that. You know when your family's birthday is coming up. So when it's a week away, not tomorrow, when it's a week away, you're like, I know, I know, like, you know, I know my aunt's birthday is next week, but like, sure, it's going to be difficult not to be there. Again, all you need to do is reinforce that conversation. You don't have to have the hard conversation again. You kind of have to remind people, remember that conversation we had? And when you're with your family, it's positive. It can be very easily done. But just even saying like, well, you know, it's going to be really difficult not to attend, you know, my aunt's birthday lunch next weekend. I really wish I could be there. It's such a, like, a, you know, Oh, it's such a pity that I have to study, but hopefully, you know, if I pass this year, like hopefully next year I won't have this issue. And your family's there, oh yeah, that's right. She's not going to be there. Oh man. They may then say, you know, no, but this aunt, you know, she's special and she's always there for you. And they may try and pull you back in. you got to stand your ground and go, I know. And it's not that like, you know, why, why are you kind of making this seem as though this is a choice in terms of how much I care about this person? We, we had this discussion, remember? Like, I've got to stick to that. Uh, it doesn't mean that I love them less. It doesn't mean that I don't care about them. But we, we did have this discussion. Um, it's, it's not possible. Like, we did have this discussion. Sometimes that's all it takes, just the memory of kind of going, remember, I'm not going to be like, it's going to be really difficult not to be there. And then most cases, you're oh, yeah, that's right. She's not going to be, oh, that's such a pity. Okay, fine. And then as the time gets closer, yeah, are you sure you can't be there? No, I wish I could, but I really can't. I really, really can't. Okay, fine. The first time that happens is going to be a little bit tricky, but then they're learning this is how it goes. So for the first couple of times that that happens, make sure you prepared in advance. There's a family there's a family occasion coming up in a week's time. Prepare everyone when things are still calm. Uh, and and, and make, make them understand that it's not something you're doing because you want to do it and you just don't care about the family. Like Sometimes that's all it takes. So preparation, to have these conversations when times are good. When things are calm, when this is not on the table, have those conversations in good time. So planning and preparation... Do this in advance. It's a lot easier and the conversations are less tough. Now they're not like, oh, I've got to upset this person. I don't want to. And include them in the conversation. It's often a lot, okay, it's a little bit sneaky, but it's a very good management tool as well. People will accept decisions a lot easier if they feel part of the decision, right? So instead of sitting there and going, guys, I'm not going to attend any family birthdays this year. We can have, we can land up at the same place if we say things like, I'm, oh, you know, one of the things that's going to be challenging this year is that there's so many family birthdays and they add up, you know, that's a lot of time. Like, how do you think, what do you, like, how do you think we can deal with this? Because I really need that time. You know, often it overlaps with test prep, you know, with tests that I have to write. So how do you, like, how do you feel we could deal with this? How do you feel I could deal with this? Um, what do you think I should do? And then if they go, well, you know, family's family and you're just going to have to attend. You go, well, 
now it's, you have to kind of push back a little bit and go understand that and you know th this is making the decision to study is not saying that I don't care about my family but in order to make this happen I'm going to have to make sacrifices and a lot of the sacrifices are going to have to be time um so you know either I'm not sleeping or I'm going to have to say no to some stuff and that's, you know, that's very difficult for me because I really want to be there, but like, I can't, it's, I'm going to set myself up for failure if that happens. Have the conversation and you're going to have to kind of quietly push back a little bit, but it's a lot easier to have the conversation. So you go, how do you think? Or like, I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I really care about the family. I want to be there, but where's the time going to come from? I work. And I'm studying, like, there's only so much sleep I can sacrifice, you know, like, I'm, I'm going to need some help here, you know, that is a lot easier than waiting until the family birthday is tomorrow, and now you upset everyone because they expected you to be there, and now you're not going to be there. So planning, preparation, very important.